All right, guys. You remember when I told you that something cool was coming a couple weeks ago and y'all didn't believe me because I kept saying it? Well. Hi, Jimmy. We're going to be vlogging the shit out of each other today. Are you pumped or what, dude? I am pumped. I'm so excited. This is what we got happening. How weird is it to see outside? We got the SR20 300ZX and we're going to be doing some titanium intercooler piping. Yes, the cool stuff. Look at that. Perfect. Yeah, you're good. Plenty of room. We're just going to have to steer that way a little bit. I like the valve cover. The masking tape is uh, a yeah. good touch. Dude, I got so. It might leak a little bit I though. I was like really counting on the red one today, and it got all moisture in the powder. So ah, it, and, that blows. There is the whole inside of it is covered with half cured powder coat. I've been cleaning for the past hour. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm like nervous. It's like I got a lot of out. Dude, for, I could not find anything. Purple power or anything. I would eat it all. Really? Goofball. Melted it off. I was like, come on. Really? I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, so I was like. All right guys, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing titanium intercooler piping on this thing like I had said before. Now, there are a lot of reasons why we're using titanium versus using aluminum. And part of the reasoning is not necessarily going to be cost. We kind of threw that out the window, but we'll get a little bit more into that in a second. So what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be running titanium from here, which is a turbo outlet, into the intercooler, which is actually down in this general area here. And then on this side, the charge pipe will run from the intercooler right down there where you can see it up to the throttle body so we're not using a whole lot of piping on this but it's going to be enough it's going to be two and a half inch one millimeter thick titanium all right guys so if you're wondering these are all the pie cuts that we're going to be using today so quite a bit each one of these pie cuts i don't know how well you're going to be able to see but each one of these pie cuts has a four and a half degree cut on either side that four and a half degree cut there we go. That four and a half degree cut gives you a nine degree pie in total. Each one of these sets here is five pies. Those five pies equal 45 degrees. So if you take two of these and you put them together, you get a 90 degree elbow. It's like a math problem. All right, guys. So we got the entire intercooler pipe for the intake side all mocked up and tacked together. So you can see <laughs> there's going to be a ton of welding there. There's so many pie cuts. I want to say there's 10 down there and there's eight up here. So there's 18 pie cuts in total. So that's going to be fun, but you can see how nice it actually fits right next to the radiator, not touching it goes down and it is going to come out right there to a 90 degree coupler and that'll take care of it. But you can see, that fits in there absolutely perfect and this is why a lot of people will use pie cuts is because you can manipulate the bends as much as you want so like if we take this out of here I don't know how well you guys can see that bend right there but it is a compound bend it's technically a 45 and then there's a bend over to the right and then to a straight piece so it is a compound bend in there which straightens everything out and gets it down into the intercooler. So we are actually going to now, probably going to put you guys on the GoPro. We are now going to weld 
that all together. It's gonna take quite a while. So what I'm probably gonna do is stick you guys on the GoPro and uh, do a time lapse of it because it's literally gonna take, again, another three hour job just like the last pie cut one was, except this is titanium. So between every inch of weld, I have to pause, I have to stop and let the gas flow continue and then I can move on to another weld. So this one might even take longer. So we'll stick you guys on the time lapse and uh, see you when we get back.
All right, guys, so after four plus hours now, we finally got this thing all welded up and in the car, so it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, looks absolutely amazing. So this is what it's looking like. Fitment is good. We're gonna do a 90 degree coupler right there. Everything fits exactly like it should. I'm so pumped to see how this feels. Yeah, I think it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be fun. All right, guys, so if you're still watching this video, awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to put a clip at the end of this. It's about five minutes long or so. It goes into a little bit of an in-depth explanation of what it takes to weld titanium. I didn't want to stick it in the middle of the video because it would just be too, too long. So the video is going to be about 20 minutes long as it is. If you want to see a little bit more info about titanium, how to weld it, and why things are so important, then just keep watching the video and it'll be at the end. If not, you could skip to the end. If not, you could rewatch it. You could do whatever you want, but please like, comment, subscribe, the usual, and uh, we'll see you later. All right, guys, so here's a little bit of info on titanium and why it's so difficult to weld and so difficult to obtain and everything else. Now, titanium is classified as a reactive metal, which basically in this case, it means that once it reaches a certain temperature, it begins to oxidize and it oxidizes quickly. There is no getting around that. It hits oxygen when it's hot and it does all sorts of crazy stuff. Now, what'll happen is it'll turn color. So you'll see when people color titanium, they heat it up and it starts to turn colors. It starts off a light straw color, then it goes pink and then it goes purple, then it goes blue, then it goes light blue. Then it starts to get kind of really light blue and then silvery and then just white and crappy, ashy, nasty, and it's done, you ruined it. So it's a very difficult metal to weld in the sense that you need to make sure that it is shielded from all oxygen while it's hot. So basically what we have to do is we cover one end, in this case with tin foil, the other end with tin foil, and we poke a few holes in the bottom of it for all the oxygen to escape. This is where we're gonna be putting in pure argon. Right in this hole, we'll put pure argon in here and that will allow us to weld this without this metal reacting. Now, the cup that we use on the welder, you're not gonna be able to gauge how big this is, but it is actually a one inch diameter cup. It is a number 16, yeah, number 16 cup, one inch in diameter. And even this, I have a little bit of a struggle keeping coverage on. I can focus. There we go. I can literally only weld about an inch at a time without losing gas coverage on the material. Now, when you're welding titanium, a light straw color is okay. That is acceptable and that is a passing weld. If there are any other colors other than silver or light straw, the weld fails, the strength is compromised, the metal oxidized, you're not getting the penetration you're looking for, and various other odds and ends. I'm gonna to try to show you this piece that I did that was purged, and if you can see inside there, maybe, the way, it looks like it was welded on the inside as well. When you purge all the oxygen out of it, the weld actually flows down into the metal and all the way through. So this metal is fused 100% inside and out. And the only way to get that to happen is to purge it. So without purging it, we would destroy this piece right here, which if you were to purchase a piece made like this, this one single solitary piece would most likely cost you between five and eight hundred dollars, depending on who was welding it, who made it, and you know what kind of stuff you're looking for. But a custom piece like this is not cheap. So for me, as the welder and the person who you know has the materials at hand, I don't want to ruin this. So I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that these welds are absolutely perfect, which includes me taking a lot of time with this. This is probably going to take me. God, I almost got killed by two pieces of stainless. This is probably going to take me three to four hours to fully weld out. I'm going to weld it in stages. I'm going to do probably the outsides first, and then we're going to roll back into the, the what they call the crotch of the bend. But we'll weld the outsides first and make sure that this metal isn't deflecting in any way. 
and then we'll start to weld the rest of it. Now, the other bad part about titanium is when you're welding like say aluminum or stainless steel, cleanliness is important. It's very important to get a good weld. When you're welding titanium, cleanliness is not just important, it is an absolute necessity. You will not get good welds on this if there are fingerprints or anything like that. So, this is going to get an acetone bath before I weld it. This is going to get completely wiped down. I'm going to wear gloves while I do it so that I do not put any fingerprints in the metal and then I will weld it up. And basically, if you could weld this in an argon chamber, you would be much better off. But because, you know, that's obviously not feasible for most small shops like myself or, you know, when you're getting into something that's bigger than this, it's going to be very difficult to weld it in an argon chamber. But we're going to do the best we can to actually weld this and get fairly decent results with it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to set the GoPro up. I'm going to set you guys up. We're going to do a time lapse on this one because it's going to take a while. So we'll do a time lapse. You'll see it and I'll come back to you guys as soon as it's done. All right, here we go. All right, guys. Perfect ending to a long night. We got this pipe all done in the car. Fits great. Tomorrow, we're going to tackle this side. We got some modifications that we need to do on the outlet right there and to the actual inlet to the turbo. And then we're gonna try to run some more piping over here. So if everything goes right, we'll be able to uh, get that piping done, get the car started, and hopefully see if she'll move under her own power. We cranked it tonight, so it's cranking. Jimmy's done an amazing job putting this thing together and we're just kind of giving it some final little touches here and making everything look nice. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's going to be kind of a long one, but there is tons of stuff to go over and I kind of wanted to get it all out in one video because there's more to come tomorrow and yada, yada, yada. So we'll get all that done and I will see you guys. Have a good night. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching the videos and I hope this one was entertaining. So have a good night, everybody.